This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. All right, welcome back to Silver and Black today here on this Tuesday. It started already, folks. Training camp. The Raiders are in camp out in Costa Mesa, California. Of course, we can't see very much of it. We'll talk about that a little bit here. This is Silver and Black today. We are an Odyssey Sports original podcast. We appreciate you guys being with us. Please subscribe wherever you get your audio. You can find the show. And also, if you're watching us on YouTube, Rumble, uh, X, wherever you're watching us, make sure you subscribe or follow us in any of those channels on YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscription button and that notifications bell. I'm Scott Branson, joined by my partner, Mo Moten. He's a senior NFL writer at Bleacher Report. You can also catch his Raiders-related work, specifically on sportsnot.com. Follow him on X at Mo Moten, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. I am at LV Goal. You can also catch my work up on sportsnot.com as well as here as we get the season rolling. All right, Mo, camp is in. Can, can you feel it? Oh, oh, what, what, first, I forgot. Just want to mention, we have a brand new sponsor here on the show. to be with us all season long. We're very excited to announce that we're going to be uh, working with BetUS. So BetUS, uh, and they are a great platform. If you're not familiar with them, you will become more familiar with them throughout the course of the year. Starting in August, we're going to have special offers and whatnot where you can actually go place some money on the Raiders or whoever you want to place some money on and get a special bonus. So we'll talk more about that as we get into August, but we want to welcome and thank BetUS for joining us for the NFL football season. Okay, Mo, everybody's in camp. Uh, nothing special so far out of Raider camp. That's a good That's a good thing. There's lots of contracts being done around the league. We might see some restructures and some uh, extensions coming for the Raiders uh, this week. It seems like some of them are happening early. We saw some in Green Bay and throughout the league. Uh, but this time of the year, man, it's like, okay, now you start to feel like we're one month and 17 days away from kickoff of week one. And I know football fans out there breathing a sigh of relief because their favorite game, their favorite team, the Raiders, almost back. It's almost like we need the timeline cleanse at this point of time, right, Scott? So <laughs> football right. comes back at a good time. Uh, as you said, Raiders, rookies and veterans, as of today, are both at camp. So far, nothing to note as far as it, the major thing when players first report are injury. So over the past weekend, if you've been paying attention to other teams, players have been coming in, being placed on the non-football injury list. These are injuries that players suffer away from the training facility, working out on their own, perhaps. Perhaps some of them were injured before they got to the league if they're rookies. Jerzon Newton, one of those guys who had off-season surgery, kind of like how um, Tyree Wilson had surgery placed on the non-football injury list. So if you're wondering what the non-football injury list is, that's what it is, just basically a player who suffered injury away from uh, actual practice with the team. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have some question marks, right, going into the Raiders camp as far as injuries. Still, uh, you have, you're worried about Colton Miller. Now, we haven't heard anything negative. It's not like we've heard that he's got a setback, but obviously that shoulder surgery, all that stuff that he had done, we're concerned with, and we'll see how he enters camp and, and what happens i would imagine again they have some time here before they actually start hitting it right so he'll have time to get in there start to get into shape depending on what kind of shape he's in you just never know with guys uh today's players seem to always come into shape i remember when i was younger mo some of these linemen would always come back from off season when it was a much different game and they'd be way overweight and they have to get into shape these guys today really keep themselves in peak condition most of them so we're excited about that to see how he's doing to me, from an injury perspective, that's it. Max Crosby, I know he had off-season surgery, but you know he's going to work himself into playing shape way before he gets to camp. Mo, anybody else you're, you're worried about that's coming off injury or had nagging injuries last year? Not necessarily worried about him, but Jackson Powers Johnson, who may expect to be the starting left guard next to Colton Miller. Again, not worried about him. But if he's not the guy, because a lot of, including myself, a lot of fans expect him to start, uh, you get Andrews Pete or Cody Whitehead, which isn't a bad fallback plan. I think we talked about this in a previous show that yep. if the rookie doesn't start, then you do have some fallback plan players there. But just something to keep an eye on. He had a nagging injury coming into the draft evaluation process, and I think that's why he slipped a little bit. I had Jackson Powers Johnson as a first-round pick. 
I remember reading reports that he could slip simply because of the injury. So he has that physical play style, but you want him to be able to balance that and be able to be available because availability is the, is the first ability <laughs> when you play NFL football. So you just hope that he can stay healthy throughout the duration of training camp. Yeah, just a wee bit important to be available to the team. But when we look <laughs> at this season going in, you know, we've been talking about it in concept all all off season knowing what the Raiders kind of had to address. Of course, we talked to that into free agency, then the draft. How are they going to address the offensive line? We kind of have some answer there. How are they going to address the defensive backfield? I want to talk about that a little bit today. Of course, quarterback. But when you look at these, uh, to me, and, and Mo, you might have a difference here too. I'm not sure. But for me, the biggest question, of course, is quarterback. I know it's been it's going to be exhausting for you guys to hear about the media, especially, and content creators talk about quarterback, but that's how important the position is. And it's one of the big question marks for the Raiders and then running backs and then defensive backs, particularly the, at that cor cornerback position. And then kind of how safety ends up because we have Trayvon Morig back there. Will he kind of regain form? Will he continue to grow and, and, and nail down that spot? Um, you look at this and those to me are the biggest questions with the quarterback. We'll get to the quarterback last, but when you look at, cornerback Mo, well, we've talked about the fact that there's some good cornerbacks veteran cornerbacks still on the market the Raiders have good young players there of course they got Jack Jones uh, Jack Jones last year and they have the opportunity to uh, see Nate Hobbs grow in the slot they have they have some good young players there uh, but this is the time of the year when guys they might wait another couple weeks but this is the time of the year where if you're a free agent you still got a lot of le gas left in the tank you're looking for a new team who's got that need and so what's your expectations about whether or not they go out of house for that veteran cornerback? I still think they will, not because they don't believe in Jacorian Bennett taking the leap, but you can't necessarily bank on him because he had a rough rookie season. And then Brandon Faison has been a basically a fill-in starter, spot starter, backup his whole career for about yeah. seven seasons. So these aren't two guys you're necessarily saying definitely going to be the starter. So why not bring in some quality veteran insurance? If you've been following uh, Vic Tafer of the athletic, he had to pose one question that, that faces the Raiders coming into the season. And he didn't go with the cornerback. He didn't go with the quarterback issue. Mm -hmm. So because it seems like Vic agrees with me that both Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell will start multiple games this season. If you remember, I said this last month that, you can pick a starter for week one, and I think it'll be Aiden O'Connell, but I think when it comes down to it, both players are going to start multiple games. And that's what mm -hmm. he said in that in that piece. But he also seems to kind of hint at the Raiders opening the door for a veteran cornerback to come in. He mentioned Adore Jackson. He mentioned Stephon Gilmore. He mentioned J.C. Jackson, who Tom Sesco signed in Los Angeles with the Chargers. It didn't work out. I would stay away from J.C. Jackson personally. Uh, but he, he seemed to say that, you know, when are the Raiders – going to sign another cornerback not if not but if. when correct so correct. I, I i actually think that eventually happens unless unless jacorian bennett just looks like a totally different player continues to look like a totally different player because he had a strong uh series of practices through the spring so unless that happens i think they sign a veteran corner. that's why yeah, that's why i think this first week and next week will be significant for for what they do at that position to your point so if they do see jacorian bennett make this huge slip and i know it's just practice it's just training camp but still you got to go with that and if they do then i see them maybe sticking there and addressing some other needs uh depending on who's available on the market but i agree on it again we've been saying you said it from the very beginning adoree jackson to me makes the most sense because of his familiarity with patrick graham so we'll see how long they wait if they go if they go more than two weeks to me, um, then that tells me that they're probably going to stick with the guy. But we'll hear some of that come out of camp, too, uh, because of the reporting of guys like you talk about, like Vic at the, at the Athletic, who are there in Costa Mesa covering the team. So so that'll be interesting. Now we look at running back, Mo, and uh, here's a situation where Zemir White gets his chance. We just don't know how he's going to do carrying a heavy, heavier load. Now, he did fine back end of the season when Josh Jacobs was out and he was able to, to get in there and find more playing time. Now, uh, when the pressure's on your so shoulders and you're the number one guy and you have some good backups in Alexander Madison, if, if he plays the same role he played in Minnesota, and of course Amir Abdul behind him, you look at this situation. Um, is this a situation where if they don't like what they see early on too, that there could be a move made there? And, and who would you, who's available that you could consider? I actually think they're just going to roll with the group that they have now. Even mm -hmm. if Zamir White doesn't look overly impressive, 
as I've said, Zamir White didn't look overly impressive in the first two years during the preseason. I mean, we we yeah. we talked on this show like, oh, Zamir White is just going to be a complimentary back. But it, he has shown that when the bright lights are on and he's the guy, the lead running back, he can handle the workload. So I, I actually don't see the Raiders adding another running back unless someone gets hurt. Because let's also remember, Sincere McCormick and Britton Brown are still also on the back end of this roster. And I'm a big Britton Brown guy. And I think that Britton Brown would have made the roster last year had he not gotten hurt. So I, I think there's there's enough depth at that position. Then you have, you know, of course, Dylan Lowby, who I think is more of a third down pass catching running back. You mentioned uh, Alexander Madison. I, I think the Raiders have enough bodies there where if, if they want to lighten Zemir White's low, which I don't see why he's a young man now. He's in the prime of his career. He can he can handle the volume. But if they want to lighten his low to split it up or, or kind of have go with a platoon, they have some young guys on the back end of the roster who can potentially make a step this year. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I also think that there are always, uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean they don't have something left in the tank, but there are always veteran running backs who seemingly don't get signed before the start of the season, right? We, we've seen it in the last multiple years where you'll have a running back. We saw Kenyon Drake after he was cut from the Raiders. Now he just retired. But but last year, remember, the, they signed him late in the season, in the in the season, uh, I think it was after week one or two. So if 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 they really have trouble with the running back position and they go into the season and they're still not getting results, and no one on the roster is helping out, that's what you end up having to do. But but I agree with you. I think I think and I think Zamir White. I'm not saying he's going to be a thousand yard rusher, uh, especially if they go with more of a committee approach to it. But certainly, I think he's shown enough that if you have the rest of that offense moving, and again, we don't know until we see what Luke Getzey's got up his sleeve here in Las Vegas versus in Chicago to see what they need to do with the running game in order to get the passing game going. And then if the passing game gets going based on the quarterback play and the offensive line play, it's all interlinked. But to me, that also points out that, that I think they go, they roll into the season with what they have too. So Cam Akers just signed with the Texans over the, over the past weekend. So he's off yeah. the market. The biggest yep. name available is Dalvin cook. But as you, as you mentioned, I don't know how Dalvin cook and Alexander Madison would feel about working together again. They were together in Minnesota for, for multiple seasons. Uh, yeah. I just think it's the Raiders backfield is crowded enough barring an injury. I don't see any additions there. So Mo, before we, we head to the break, the conversation I want to have is about the core. I know we're going to talk a lot about the quarterbacks. We're going to see how they do. We'll see what the reports are, how they look. We know the reports out of mini camp were not good. That doesn't bother me as much because learning, learning a new offense, you're in there in shorts and shirts and helmets. You're just not really, I mean, you're trying to get some work done, but now the real work begins. And so after this first week, what we hear coming out based on how the quarterbacks are playing will be determined. You and I have both been on the record saying that we believe Aiden O'Connell has that edge. And, and I have every reason to believe that Aiden O'Connell will start week one versus the Chargers. You brought up a great point, too, about how he did against the Chargers last year as well, which is something um, that gives him uh, another, I think, edge there. But when you look at this quarterback position, you know, so many so many of our listeners – have hit me up in social media and be like, well, what do you really think? What are they going to do? Are they are they, are they going to do well? And I honestly say it could go both ways. I really believe this Raider team, based on this quarterback situation, this Raider team could get up there, win nine, 10 games, right? Uh, or they could win six or seven, depending on how things go. And that's the, the, the duality, I think, of where the Raiders are, Mo. I have a very, I have a kind of a, a cautiously optimistic view as we enter camp here on where they can go. And a lot of that is, and I know people are going to say, well, you're, you're, you're considering too much the quarterback, but that's how much weight I put on the quarterback play. How could you not put a lot of weight on the quarterback play? I mean, that guy, whoever is going to start, we think it's going to be, you know, Connell is going to have to deal the ball and, and, and not to say that making Devontae Adams happy is the main goal, but you got to feed your top wide receiver, right? And he mm -hmm. has to be able to be that point guard of the offense and and be able to distribute that ball to a handful of playmakers. Devonta Adams, Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker, Michael Mayer, Brock Bowers. How is that quarterback going to be able to balance all of that talent? And, of course, a little bit of that is Luke Getty and his play design, but there's going to be a lot of pressure on the quarterback position to make this engine go. Can this Raider team average 24 more points a season? If they do or if they can, then I, I wouldn't say the playoffs are far-fetched. And people, some people are going to listen to me and think I'm, I'm crazy for saying that. 
But I think the Raiders are a serviceable quarterback away from making a playoff push. Yeah, I know I have them at eight and nine, which is kind of on that five hundred mark border. But you know, a game or two here and there, you're you're ten and seven. You know, nine and eight, and you're in the hunt. So it, I don't want to say it all boils down to the quarterback position because I think Anders said this on our last show in the mailbag. They're going to have to really lean into their defense, but the quarterback is still going to have to do his part and pull his weight. Right, because again, and I, that's a lot of what I hear folks tell me in 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 social media when they when they're dialoguing with me about the Raider team coming up, is this idea: well, the defense will keep them closer in game, so they don't have to score as many points. True, but you have to score points, right? So I'm not <laughs> saying they got to score 30 a game, but we saw several times last year where they struggled to score any points, uh, and so so to me, that's the key there. And again, I think this is why. Besides the point that they don't watch or keep track of the Raiders on a daily basis, I think a lot of the national media, that's why they put them in the six, seven win category because of the quarterback position and because of the Raiders' recent lack of success as far as playoffs go, uh, having won only really in the last five years. So you look at that and you think, okay, now I can understand it. And to me, that's that's where I'm a little more optimistic because I follow the team. And like you said, they're a serviceable quarterback away from making a playoff run. And I really believe that AFC is tough. AFC is tough, not just the AFC West, but the entire conference. And so um, uh, you have to look at that and and know and evaluate them against other teams. But the first goal is just to win games and get to the playoffs. So it'll be exciting. All right. You have something else, Mo, before we hit the break? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, it, I would say the projection for the Reds is a lot lower media outlet wise. I'm seeing me. I would say the Reds are only going to win four or five games. Yeah. And that's why a lot of true. A lot of me. outs have the Raiders finishing fourth in the AFC West. And I and I vehemently, vehemently disagree with that. I think it's going to be the Broncos. But <laughs> Like, like it seems like every year, Scott, we have guests on. And they say, "Oh, the Raiders going to win three, four games." And I'm not saying that you need to pound your chest for mediocrity of winning, you know, seven <laughs> to eight, nine games. But the Raiders aren't as bad as the media paints them to be. They're not. Yeah. They're not a playoff team either in recent years. But they're not. A, they're not a dumpster fire team that finishes last every year, as many people think. Right. And I think one of the other closing <laughs> points is uh, everyone's excited about Antonio Pierce, and he did such a great job tail end of last year to pull that team together. There's a different sell, right? It's a different sell. You have those guys bought in last year as he rescued, and I've made this point before, rescued them from the disaster that was Josh McDaniels. But now you're going into a season and you got to carry on that buy-in for 18 weeks, right? And so so I think that's where some of that comes in too. I think he'll do it, but I think that that's a question. It's another question mark for people evaluating the Raiders from the outside. So again, as he said, they can – he can put his resume on the grass. They can prove it on the grass, prove it with wins, prove it with discipline. So we'll see, uh, but it's going to be fun to watch. All right, we're going to set aside for our break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Devontae Adams again and some of this clickbait porn stuff, <laughs> football porn, right? It's just ridiculous. So we'll get to that uh, here on Silver and Black today. Scott Moe coming right back at you. Michael Vick at BetUS.com. Catch an incredible 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. All right, we are back here on Silver and Black today. We appreciate you guys being with us. If you don't already subscribe to the podcast, do us a favor. Do it wherever you get your audio. Just look for Silver and Black today and subscribe there also do us a favor if you're watching us on a video platform youtube channel is always a great one we get great chat there live chat during the show you can uh, subscribe there also hit the notifications bell and hit a thumbs up for us as we appreciate it scott Branson, you can follow me on x.com at lv gully and mo moton my partner here you can follow him at m-o-e-m-o-t-o-n all right now i'm wearing my my special hat if you're watching us on video uh, which has, it says, don't be a, and it has a rooster. I'm going to say it so I don't violate any issues because we try to keep things clean here most of the time. It says, don't be a rooster, and then it's got a big sucker next to it, like a big lollipop. Well, lollipops are different than suckers. So I'm wearing my rooster sucker, don't be a rooster sucker <laughs> hat because, again, we saw Devontae Adams, all the trade stuff. We talked about that last show and how – People are are wishful thinking, and Devontae Adams never said he finally squelched it, at least for now, uh, saying that no. And his agent said no. There, this, there's no truth to any veracity, no veracity to the point that uh, that Adams wants to be traded or they want blah blah blah. Aaron Rodgers. So, 
Devonte goes on the the Club Shay Shay podcast and answers questions uh, about, hey, would you how how would you like to play with Tom Brady? Oh man, I'd love to play with Tom Brady. He'd be amazing, but but just like I'd like to play with Aaron Rodgers. And I'm I'm completely encapsulating the conversation. Go look at the conversation itself. But this is a question, Mo. Like, um, you know, you you have a situation where something's not going to happen, but you ask, hey, he's one, of, he's the greatest quarterback that ever that ever played the game. Would you have liked to play with him? Now he didn't say the question that way, but again, the sports porn content makers out there take it. Oh, is Tom Brady coming back? Could he unretire with the Raiders since he's part owner? Besides the the legalities of that, which make it not possible. And then, of course, he he mentioned Aaron Rodgers again. So people, oh, see Aaron Rodgers, and it just blows my mind because it's sort of like, hey, would you like to do a, a talk show with, I don't know, name the person, Colin Cowherd, wh whoever it is, uh, I don't know, Stephen A. Smith. My answer would be, yeah, that'd be really cool to do that. That doesn't mean I'm gonna do it. It doesn't mean that it can happen. It's just a sign of respect to say, yeah, I'm a wide receiver. Would I like to catch balls from the best quarterback that ever lived? Yes. And Aaron Rodgers, he already played with. So it's just a vet. They're just having a conversation. Of course, people run with it. And it's like, oh, Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady will be 75 years old and people will still be <laughs> trying to pretend like he's going to come back. Tom Brady will be 47 years old in August, right? So <laughs> he's already unretired once. So I could see how media outlets will spin this and say, could he unretire again? A second time and make another comeback with the Raiders who have a quarterback competition going on. It all kind of fits into the rumor porn as you have it on the uh, ledger there. <laughs> but the combination of the Raiders not knowing who their starter is, Tom Brady being involved with the Raiders, and now Devontae Adams saying what he said all culminates into a big curated article. Can Tom Brady return and lead the Raiders to a championship, a <laughs> Super Bowl, reverse the curse of the tuck rule? There's so many storylines attached to this, right? So there's so many ways you can run with this story. And Tom Brady, I've watched Tom Brady appear in a lot of other shows, and he seems focused on being the fox sports you know fox sports lead yeah I, that's his focus right now plus you know they he's trying to be limited what is it limited owner and partnership with you know mark davis with the raiders dealings that's going on too so it, it seems like he's closed the book on his playing career and he's focused on the next chapter in his life i i would just i wouldn't pay any of those rumors any attention simply because the other thing is tom brady let, let's say in a hypothetical world if he were to come back He's got to get back into shape because he hasn't been around camp. I know you don't forget how to play football. You don't forget how to throw a football if you're one of the best to do it. But you got to understand part of it is the grind. Like you have to yeah. be mentally checked into this. You can't just say, I, I know how to play football. I could do this. I could do that. But the grind of practice, you know, playing in, in games are, are probably the easiest part. A lot of players say playing the game is the fun part. Not the easiest part, but the fun part. It's the practices, the grind you have to go through week to week. And I don't think Tom Brady is interested in that, in that lifestyle right now. He can put that behind him. So let's just focus on the, what the Raiders have at the quarterback position active. And that's probably going to be Aiden O'Connell or Garner Minshew. Right. And and I look at the situation, too, and I just think, again, um, I, I know Raider fans aren't there clamoring for it. It's it's not. It's just a sensational title yeah. to, to, to look at the content, which I get. You know, we're all in the content game. But as I've gone on, and I will save you all from another lecture on it, it's just when stuff is so ridiculous. And it also, it says something about our society too, Mo. In the, and, and listen, I'm guilty of this sometimes too, even when it comes to music and stuff, which is those greats, you love those greats, right? They're so good. They mean so much to the sport, even if you don't like Tom Brady, which I know most Raider fans don't. But it's like the, 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 the collective sports world misses having guys like that around, right? Guys like him, Peyton Manning, going back, to the guys uh, like Joe Montana, all those great quarterbacks and great running backs and wide receivers and all that stuff. They miss having those guys. It's such a great story and it's easy to play up because they've done so much. We have a hard time letting go, right? We have a hard time letting go, but there's also a, a community out there that wants to turn any morsel of rumor into a headline for their own gain, right? <laughs> so if you've been following Tom Brady or if you've been following the team, you, the Raiders, you'd know that this is, this is one of those, you know, one in a million chance of happening simply, simply because it's, it's age. 
It's where his mindset is. It's how the Raiders are building their football team. You know, can you imagine Tom Brady just kind of helicoptering in on the second week of training camp and go, yeah, I'm ready to go. And it's kind of like, well, okay, I guess Aiden O'Connell's got to give up number 12. And then we got, <laughs> that's, that's a minor issue. That's a Aiden O'Connell's got to give up the magic of the number 12 jersey. And I'm sure, you know, Devontae Adams would obviously be happy about this. But this this is just, it's just not realistic to think he's just going to drop his broadcasting gig and just shift his focus automatically like this. And not only is it not realistic, but if I'm a Raider fan, I'm saying, look, I want to know whether Aiden O'Connell can be that guy, number one. And if he's not, that's fine. That's why you signed Gardner Minshew. And if he's not that guy, then I don't want to just have Tom Brady. Now, look, I know, hey. Everybody would love to win a Super Bowl. So if Tom Brady came back, won a Super Bowl, and then retired again, you're back in the same spot. So you want I, – I, I would imagine Raider fans don't want just a, a, a one more Super Bowl trophy and then to be irrelevant another 15 years. You want to build a consistent winner like you've seen in New England, Kansas City, and San Francisco, other places where they're at least there all the time. Like this team could win the Super Bowl. They don't always do it, but they could – and and to do that, you got to have all the spots. Not only do you have to have a great defense, good offensive line, defensive line, but you need to have that quarterback too. So that's the other downside to that is okay, it's it's quick. You get this great rush satisfaction out of whatever Tom Brady does, and then you're going back to being oh crap, who's our quarterback? So I think it, it less in a hypothetical world, if Tom Brady were to come back, you're drafting a quarterback regardless at that point because yep. now you you've. You've got Aiden O'Connell one year removed from actually playing in a football game, assuming Tom Brady plays up the whole season. You know Tom Brady's 47. He's not your long-term answer. So you're, you're getting a quarterback regardless of what happens there. Yeah. I, I just go back to the fact that it's just 47 years old. Not to say that Tom Brady is going to be awful, but how do we know that <laughs> at 47 he, he's going to be, you know, he's going to leave the Raiders to the playoffs. It's not a guaranteed either. You know, Nothing's let's guaranteed. remember in Tom Brady's last season, I believe the Buccaneers went eight, and nine, right? And they won a weak division. This AFC West division is much stronger than the NFC South. So he's not winning the division at eight, and nine, right? You're going to have to get a better version of Tom Brady than we last saw him in Tampa Bay. If he in a hypothetical world, if he were to unretire again, right? And it's no different than if they sat down with a current basketball player and said, Hey, would you like to play with Michael Jordan? Well, yeah, of course I'd love to play with Michael Jordan. He's not coming out of retirement. But, I mean, that's 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 what you do. You're just asking them a question. It's a sign of respect. It's a, a wide receiver who saw what this quarterback did. So I just – I find it funny. And, again, thank God camp has started. So we actually have some <laughs> stuff to talk about and other people. We – you know, yes, we had shows where we did best ofs and that kind of stuff or, you know, top ten quarterbacks, top five running backs. That kind of, That's all fine. But this this reaching for stories that aren't really stories, um, they never go away. There, there's always some there, right? There's always rumors and things like that. But at least we'll have some football to talk about as we get reports coming out of camp uh, with the Raiders. So that's exciting. And, um, yeah, just just chill. Just chill. Just remember, people who are writing about that stuff, kind of crazy. But we'll see. You'll never – you won't see a Tom Brady article for me unless something really happens. Or you, we won't – we weren't turn that turn it into a big talking point. We brought it up today simply because this is probably the last show where we're going to talk about primarily rumors because, again, <laughs> nothing – there. there's, you know, there's no major news to actually discuss. Right. So we'll touch on some things because, you know, some people will ask us too because they don't want to maybe ask us publicly. But some people will hop in our DMs and – what do you think about this possibility? What do you think about that possibility? So sometimes we do bring up topics that others bring to us that necessarily they won't say publicly, but they want us to kind of touch on it. Yes. Like the Brandon Ayuk trade idea. Yes. Ah, uh, we get some. I still got some. I got some of those this morning, as a matter of fact. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's all good. All right. We're going to take our final break. When we come back, we're going to get to you. We're going to get to the Raider Nation mailbag. We got a couple calls here and a text. If you want to be a part of that for the next show, do us a favor. Call us. 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Got a couple calls recently where you didn't leave your name or where you're calling from. And so we're going to, because we're getting more calls now, if you don't do that, then I can't put it on the air. So make sure you put your name and where you're calling from at the beginning of your call so we know who you are. And then we'll get your call on the air. You're with Mo and Scott. We're coming back right after this. Welcome back home stretch here on Silver and Black today, the Tuesday edition. 
as a training camp gets underway in Costa Mesa, California. Scott Colbranson, Mo Moten with you, Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Do us a favor, subscribe wherever you get your audio and also on our YouTube channel. Hit the subscription button and that notifications bell. We appreciate it very much. Now is the time we get to your voice. That's right. The voice of the fan, your calls, your texts. And to be a part of that on the next show, just call us. You can leave us a voicemail or a text message. Again, name where you're calling from and your question. Make sure you get that in and then we'll use it. 702-900-7869 is the number. 702-900-7869. By the way, I saw a couple of outlets, Mo, do a story that I did actually right after the announcement of the Raiders moving their camp to Southern California. I guess I was, I wrote it too far in advance because there's a story. Well, you know, the Raiders can't have local media there. They can't have fans there. They can't promote it, which we talked about on this show, actually, after I wrote that story up on sports, not, I think it was back in June or May, June. beginning of June, maybe. And um, so that's, that's coming. So you, you will see Vegas media there and maybe some national media, but no LA media. So we know how popular that, and I feel bad. We have a lot of listeners in Los Angeles, a ton of listeners in Los Angeles. I feel bad that their team is right there <laughs> and they can't go be a part of it. It's like someone getting you a present for Christmas and saying, here's your present. Don't touch it. Don't, Don't touch look it. at it. Right. <laughs> Don't do anything. It's right there though. Yes. You, see, yeah. you, you, you know, it's there, but you can't do anything with it. Right. Yes. So like you said, uh, Las Vegas media able to obviously report on the team, but no local media allowed. Right. And and the Chargers and Rams had a lot to do. That's their territory. So they they legally could do that. And they they've exercised that option. And I can't see as I blame them because there's more Raider fans there than there is Chargers and Rams fans. So I get it. Although the Rams, I think, are much bigger than the Charger fans. So all right, we're gonna get to our first call here. Uh, this is John from Oroville. He called in several weeks ago here on the show before. Uh, here is John Oroville with our first call on the Raider Nation mailbag. Hello, Scott and Mo. It's John from Oroville, California, and I just wanted to take a moment and thank you, fellas. I don't think I've done that in the past, and I just wanted to let you both know I really do enjoy the show. I know all of our listeners out there enjoy the show. And, and you know, the, the part I really enjoy the most is uh, the mailbag. I love hearing from yeah. the fans and their perspectives and having them bounce those ideas off of you guys and seeing what you think about the ideas. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, wanted to get on to uh, some great Raider conversation uh, this morning. And uh, welcome, Raider Nation. This is going to be a great year. I cannot wait for September and the games to kick off in the dog days of summer right now and a lot of uh, – surviving on trade talk in the media, which I know you guys, Mo and Scott, are probably getting tired of hearing about, but it is interesting and it gives us something to talk about. So let's get back to it for a second, even though you were hoping this might die. <laughs> hey, Devontae Adams, let's talk about him for a minute, okay? I know that series was from last year. McDaniels was the coach. We had Garoppolo as the quarterback. A lot has improved. His attitude is happier with the guys we have in place. The coach, AP, you've got the quarterback, Aiden, who I think is going to grow into a nice quarterback. But focus on this. Devontae Adams, remember the game where Jacoby Myers had three touchdowns and we won the game and Devontae was pissed because he didn't get involved in us. That kind of said a little bit to me about what's most important to Devontae, and he pretty much said it in that interview in the locker room, you know, his – legacy was more important than wins and losses is what I was hearing and I think back to when we had Darren Waller and our offense was predicated on basically forcing the ball to Waller or Jacobs that was our offense and we won some games with it but we couldn't get over the top with it and I think when you're one dimensional and you're focused so much on one receiver versus spreading the ball around it's it's not a successful recipe, in my opinion. You know, a diverse offense that the defense has no idea where you're going to hit them at from play to play. You know, you might hit them here, you might hit them there, you might bust them up the middle. Any of those things can happen, and a defense has a hard time preparing for that. But when you've got Devontae pressuring the quarterback, whoever it may be, to force the ball to him over and over and over again, regardless of whether it's the right thing to do or not, 
regardless of interceptions, this and that. I just feel like that Jacoby Myers game showed me a lot about how a diverse offense can be versus. Oh, and there's John. He he went over the limit. So, John, but we got your point there, buddy. Thank you for the yeah. call. Mo, what do you think of that? I mean, listen, Devontae Adams wanting the ball under Josh McDaniels to understand it because nothing was working. John's point was after the change uh, and after that specific game, Devontae still wasn't happy. Do you read what he reads into that? Or is that just a guy, hey, he's a competitive guy. He's one of the best in the game. And I'm sure he was happy for the team win, but he was just ex expressing some frustration that he wanted to be part of it. You know, if you know me, you know I'm a guy that harps on patterns and consistency. Mm -hmm. So if Devontae Adams had a pattern of pouting because he wasn't getting enough targets, yeah, I would be more concerned about it. But I think his point, and I'm talking about Devontae Adams, I think Devontae Adams' point, his frustrations with that game was, look, you brought me in, you traded a first and a second round pick for me, and you paid me this big contract. I want to be able to be a part of why the team is winning. And right. I think that for any competitor, especially at his level, you want to be a big part of every win because you're people are going to say, well, we're paying Devontae all of this money because the other side of it is if Devontae is not getting the ball, not producing at a high level, you're going to get fans yeah. saying we're paying Devontae all of this money and he's not producing at the level he used to produce. We need to move. We need to trade him. And there are some people out there who already feel that way. So I think part of it, in his mind is I'm getting paid all this money. I want to contribute. I want to be part of the big wins. Now that was, I didn't see too much lingering sulking from him mm -mm. because let's be honest, his numbers haven't, you know, his numbers are still pretty good, but haven't been comparable to his green Bay years, obviously with Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the game right now. So I, I get it. If it's a one-off, you know, here and there, he's like, look, I need, I need the ball more. What I don't want to see is, and we saw this in a couple of games where the quarterback or the play caller forced the ball to Devontae Adams, yeah. and that didn't work. Mm -hmm. When Devontae Adams got a bunch of, I, I vividly remember a few games or a couple of games where Devontae Adams got, you know, 12 plus targets, and it didn't look good because it, the offense became predictable. I think that's what John is talking about in his email that you don't want a an established wide receiver at Devontae Adams level pressuring a young or inexperienced quarterback like Aiden O'Connell to throw on the ball because that quarterback is going to then start forcing him the ball. Right. You know, it, it, it could even happen with Gardner Minshew, who's a spot starter. So and, and, and until the Raiders start to show that they're forcing the ball and the offense becomes predictable, and it again, Devontae Adams doesn't have this lingering sulking period where he for a month he's like, I need the ball, I need the ball, I need the ball, then I wouldn't worry about it. But like I said, I remember, I, I know what John's talking about, yeah, you just don't want that to linger in the locker where the offense becomes too predictable, too one dimensional. Well, and I also think too. I mean, he he on the other side of this, he mentioned Jacoby Mer Myers and 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 how it showed him when your when your offense is more diverse. Absolutely, when you have multiple playmakers, yeah. that too is part of that. Because listen, if you go to a guy and he's having a hot hand, you go to the hot hand. And I think yeah. especially every quarterback would do that, but particularly a young quarterback. If a young quarterback finds he's in a rhythm with a wide receiver, even though you have Devontae Adams on the other side and he's a great player, he's going to be a Hall of Fame player, um, you're hitting that guy, and for whatever reason, that game at that moment, it's working. And so you're going to go back to that. And I'm sure the coaching staff was doing the same thing with the play calling. It was like, oh, we're going to target Jacoby because whatever you guys got going out there today, this mystical feeling between the two of you, it's working. So I think that's going to happen, and you see it happen all the time. I think Jacoby Myers is a good wide receiver. He's not a number one wide receiver. But uh, that's why you have them. That's why you kept them. And um, we'll see how that all works out. But but I understand it. And, and I agree with you, Mo. I think you have to consistently look at how guys offer. And you see those shows behind the scenes. Remember, I'm not saying anybody was trying to deceive or play up a storyline. But remember, those shows are edited extensively. Okay? So how it's put together often can also show you a side. And it looks like somebody's talking about it. It might have missed a quote where he said after that where he said, yeah, yeah, I'm not happy about it, but you know what, man, we win. And my whole attitude is about winning and I could care less if I had zero yards. Like he might've said that afterwards. I'm not saying it did, but I'm just saying that when you see reality shows, uh, they're edited significantly to tell a story. And so you sometimes miss context. So that's the point I'll make about that. All right. What's that, Mo? You're really quick. You also have to consider the context of the season. The Raiders were struggling to score last year. So yes, I, I guess he, you know, I think he, one of the things that he said, and I'm paraphrasing is that, 
if this offense is going to go, I have to be a part of it. Right. And, I, and, I, and I also believe that if Meyer, Jacoby Myers is going off, he's fine with that as long as the team is winning. Correct. It's much like they talked about Josh Jacobs being that last year, which he was until he got hurt, right? And they couldn't get him the ball anymore. But anyway, all right, we're going to go off to our next call. And John, again, thank you for your call. Sorry, I got cut appreciate off. It. Yep. If you guys try to be as brief as you can, but we appreciate it. If you want to go up to the end when it cuts you off, that's fine too. Got no problem with it. All right. Louie in Oregon. A call from Oregon today. Here we go. Hey, this is Screwy Louie in Oregon. Screwy Louie. How Louis. you doing, Ebony and Ivory? <laughs> Yo, Mo, what do you know, bro? I was thinking <laughs> since I've been a Raiders fan since Super Bowl II, even though they wow. lost to Green Bay, they showed a lot of heart. I think this is the year they have to make it happen, at least mm. make it to the playoffs. Without a premier quarterback, it's hard to do. I know that. Um, and if they don't make it and they don't win very many games, getting an elite quarterback will be really hard, especially with the draft. There's not a lot of primo um, quarterbacks out there. So if all else fails, they might have to sell the house to get someone, maybe Prescott. Now he's going to be too high priced. They, he probably could get him to the playoffs, but I don't think he could take him to the Super Bowl. But he'd be the only real option if all else fails. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on this? I think you guys are the best podcast out there wow. on YouTube. I watch you all the time. So thanks for being there. Um, take care. God bless. Bye. All right. There's Screwy Louie. He's not so screwy. Screw I expected Louis. some wackiness there. Uh, longtime Raider fan. Uh, Louie, thank you for the compliments. We appreciate it. There's a lot of great Raider content out there. Can, can I just say something real quick? I, I want to say this to Screwy Louie and a lot of Raider fans who are older Raider fans who remember the Raiders in the 60s and 70s. I really appreciate those listeners, not more than other listeners, but I really appreciate those listeners because they've watched this Raider team for, what, six decades. <laughs> and there's they're... they're as Screw Louis said, he's tuning into YouTube, watching you and I talk. And I know I'm, you know, a little younger than you, Scott. But for 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 older fans to show me that respect, I'm coming along. I'm in my mid to late 30s. A lot of these fans have been watching the Raiders longer than I was born, and the fact that they they tune in to hear my opinions on the team really really means a lot to me. Screw Louis and any Raider fan who's been around from you know from the 60s to the 70s. So Screw Louis watched Daryl Monica play. I had, if you remember back in our quarterback ranking show, I had Daryl LaMonica as the second best Raider quarterback in history. Yes. And I said a lot of people didn't watch Daryl LaMonica, the Mad Bomber, play. But if you did, I'm sure Screwy Lee saw him because he said he remembers Super Bowl too. So he remembers LaMonica in that game. He can appreciate the greatness that Daryl LaMonica had and how he was way before his time. So he has a lot more insight than I do. So, which is again, why I appreciate older Raider fans who tune in and respect my opinion on the team. Well said. And, and Louie, uh, as far as the, 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 the Raiders, if the Raiders made the playoffs this year, it'd be a huge success, I believe, because you can build on that. And I understand what you're saying about, Hey, if they, if they do that, then the opportunity to go get a quarterback would be more difficult. Now, if they get into the playoffs and one of the reasons they don't go far in the playoffs is because of quarterback play. Like if they inch in somehow and the quarterback play has not been great, but it's been good enough then somebody like Dak Prescott, I've been hearing a lot of Dak Prescott talk because he's going to be the premier guy. If he does hit the free agency wire come, come next season, if the Cowboys don't do something with him now. And I've been hearing a lot of people talk about that. A lot of people who weren't necessarily a Dak Prescott fan are saying, well, if that's one of the options, the Raiders can do it. He might be worth it. When you look at Dak Prescott, is that a guy, if you're the Raiders, you've built this defense, let's say they, they continue and they show us consistency like they did last ten, end of last year. Their offense clicks well. That offensive line is doing well. Uh, the running game delivers as much as it can. Um, is that a guy you would consider, Mocha? Because at that point, if you made the playoffs and you had a pretty well-rounded team, but you just had some weaknesses at quarterback and maybe a couple other places, is it would it be time for you to go get a guy like Dak Prescott, pay him the money, and can Dak Prescott lead you to a Super Bowl? It depends on the circumstance. So if the Raiders finish with a top 10 pick, 
I would probably lean toward a rookie because Dak Prescott right. is going to cost you 50 to $60 million. Uh, you, yeah. And if you're going to pay Dak Prescott 50 to $60 million, you're expecting to compete for a Super Bowl. Correct. There's no, oh, let's just make the playoffs. No, if you're going to pay a quarterback that much money, you're expecting to make a deep run. So if I'm a top, if I have a top 10 pick and I find the Raiders, I would lean more toward developing a rookie uh, quarterback. Because what we, what do we always talk about in this show, Scott? The rookie quarterback contract. Right. As you do so many other things with the roster. So that would be my priority. If it's a top 10 pick. If the Raiders, let's say, are 8 and 9, 9 and 8, 10 and 7, and they wind up with a you know pick between 16 and 20, and the quarterback situation is a little murky, and you're looking at Devontae Adams and saying, okay, how do we maximize what we have with Devontae Adams and the playmakers that we have now? What did yeah. I say in the first segment, Scott? The Raiders are a quarterback away from being – perennial playoff contenders, contenders in my opinion if you plug in Dak Prescott you will be in my opinion with this supporting cast that he would have a perennial playoff contender can they reach the Super Bowl tough because you're going up against the Ravens you're going up against the Chiefs you're going to possibly against the Bills CJ Stroud the Texans are on the way up you know yep. who knows what the Chargers are going to be so Dak Prescott hasn't shown that he he's able to lead his team to the Super Bowl in the NFC but let's not put that all on Dak Prescott. We all know the quarterback gets a lot of blame when teams lose, a lot of credit when teams win. But if you look at the Cowboys' losses in the playoffs, and I know they got molly whopped by the Packers last year, but their other two playoff losses were against the San Francisco 49ers, who a lot of people feel like were one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. So if you look at the Cowboys' record, they've been 12-5 and five for three consecutive years. If you're a Raider fan, you're listening to me right now and you're saying, and I'm telling you, you can get Dak Prescott and you can go 12 and five for three consecutive years. Would you take that with the opportunity to make a run? Yeah. I would if I don't have a top 10 pick to draft the quarterback. Well, and he's 30 years old, just turned 30 years old, right? Um, and so you figure if he stays at the top of his game and doesn't get injured, you get maybe four years, right? Maybe four years. Yeah. I, I probably wants a four At or least. five year deal. Yeah. Um, and so, so you know, he's an athletic guy, so he's in shape. Yes. He's had some injuries, but overall 73 and 41 is his record, right? In 114 games. And then you look at last year, you talked about it. They went 12 and five. He had 36 touchdowns, uh, only nine interceptions. So he took care of the ball last year. And so, so yeah, I mean, listen, We'll see what happens. Uh, but I agree with you. I think that if you're in a position to take a quarterback or move up and take a quarterback, great. If not, then, and, and you did really well and you made the playoffs and you're like, man, we are a quarterback away from winning three more games or two more games, going to 11 wins, 12 wins, 10, whatever it is, then I think you got to consider it. So we'll see. I know we got a lot of time before that. We got a season to play first and who knows what will happen uh, this year. But uh, Louis, thank you so much for your call. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to get to our good friend, Tarek, who's calling us from Chicago. Of course, he's traveling. We haven't heard from him in a couple weeks, but here is Tarek uh, on the Raider Nation mailbag. Good morning, Scott and Mo. This is Tarek checking in with you guys from Chicago. Hope you guys are well. Uh, the wait is over. Let's get this party started. <laughs> Rookies report today. Veterans report this Tuesday. I'm looking forward to a really great competitive camp with some good storylines. And I'm really hoping during this camp that one of the quarterbacks takes the bull by the horns and kind of solidifies the starting job. Hopefully they're not just going back and forth. Um, interesting comments by Javante Adams with regards to the only quarterback he'd be reunited with would be Aaron Rodgers. And then something about Tom Brady coming out of retirement saying he can <laughs> still throw the ball better than half the guys in the league. The only way to make uh, those type of things go away, I think Javante's using a little bit of reverse psychology. Um, the only way to make those things go away is to have a legit offense this year and with, with, along with winning. And uh, talking to you, uh, Getsy, no excuses. You've got a lot of pieces to play with, and hopefully um, I think uh, the offense will certainly benefit from going up against what should be a really stout defense this season. Our offense should benefit against uh, going against them in camp. Uh, let's definitely stay healthy during camp as well. That's the key as well. And I'm hoping that uh, the running backs uh, also stand out because we're going to need a good semblance of a running game this fall as well. Looking forward to your guys' uh, training camp coverage. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Go Raiders. Bye-bye. All right, there you go. Tarek from Chicago. And Mo, you know, he brought up a good point there. And I think we all have very high, including you and I, we all have very high expectations of the defense. And so the defense, if the defense struggles at all, 
that would be a terrible sign for this Raiders team. I'm not saying every, listen, every defense, every offense, every team goes through ups and downs of the season. I'm not saying that kind of thing, but if the defense doesn't gain that consistency or play at the level we saw them play last year, puts more pressure on the offense, more pressure on the quarterbacks, and it becomes a larger issue. Is that C word, Scott, that I like consistency? <laughs> the Raiders aren't going anywhere if they have a mediocre offense and mediocre defense. Right. Case closed on that one. So if the offense is not so good, the defense has to be top level. And we think the defense can be top level this year. Absolutely. Right? So, so, and this is why I feel like if, if you get, as Tarek said, some semblance from the run game, Aiden O'Connell are going to mention a very timely with some accurate throws to the supporting cast that they have. The Raiders may have something here. They may have a playoff, a borderline playoff team. If you look at the bottom, if you look at some of the wild card teams in the AFC last year, or a couple of them, the Steelers and the Browns particularly, right? The Steelers and the Browns both made the playoffs. They had Joe Flack. The Steelers had Mason Rudolph, who was their third string, by the way, because they <laughs> Kenny Pickett got hurt and he got benched. They moved on to Mr. Trubisky. He wasn't it. Then they moved to Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph gave that team a steady offense, and they had a top level defense. The Browns, same situation. They had a they had a top level defense. Joe Flacco comes in for Deshaun Watson, who was hurt. Now he was throwing for three hundred plus yards, but he also turned the ball over a lot. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't pristine Joe Flacco, but he was good enough to get that team to the playoffs. Now they got Molly Wap by the Texans when they got there. But my point stands is that though neither of those teams had top level quarterbacks, but what they did have in common was top level defenses. And again, we think the Raiders can have a defense comparable or better than those teams had last year. Now, if Aiden O'Connell Garden Minshew are just solid, you can get you can get yourself into a wild card spot. Now, if they're both awful, then then you know all heck breaks loose. And right. we we you know we don't know where it goes from there. It could, things could get a little fuzzy at the trade deadline. I, I don't think Antonio Pierce goes anywhere because I don't think Mark Davis wants a revolving door at the head coaching position or the GM spot. But then you're thinking about okay, do we blow certain parts of this team up? to get better, maybe acquire draft capital. And that's that's a conversation that I hope we don't have No, late October, early November. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants that because that would mean uh, another down season. And, and I think I think the Raiders have the ability to make this as uh, as Tarek and as as Louis said up in Oregon, I think they have the ability to make it a nice season, a good season. Mm -hmm. Uh, with what mm -hmm. they have. And, and I don't anticipate both quarterbacks being horrible, right? But it could happen. You, you just don't know yeah, in yeah. the parameter of what's going on with the offensive coordinator, all that. So we'll have to see how it all ends up, but we're going to be here for all of it. And of course, we'll be back here on Tuesday. So thank you guys for all your calls today. We appreciate it. Uh, but we will uh, get back to it on Thursday, uh, maybe with a special guest as well, but we're going to talk about what's coming out of camp, what we're hearing about performance so far. Uh, if anybody, hopefully, Everybody stays healthy, and uh, if there's any contract news, we'll have that as well. Mo, uh, it is Tuesday. Let everybody else uh, know what. Uh, excuse me. What? Let everybody know what else you have going on the rest of this week. So uh, over on Sports Night, I think I'm gonna have a, a, a nice training camp battle preview. Uh, just kind of a refresher who I think is gonna win the Raiders' uh, biggest training camp battles. Of course, quarterback, cornerback. And also some of the some of the backup roles. Uh, again, if Jackson Powers Johnson is not quite ready, maybe there's some things over there at left guard. We'll talk about. Also have a Bleacher Report live stream coming up. We'll talk about the depth chart in depth, how things could shake out for the initial 53 man uh, roster. And then we're off to the races, Scott. We'll, we'll be talking yeah. training camp, and we'll be getting into a lot of other fun things that we'll you know we'll discuss on the show and actual football. Woo. How about that? Actual football, and we're only a little over a week away from the Hall of Fame game. Yeah, I know, but it's football on the field, <laughs> on TV, right? So exciting stuff. We're looking forward to it. Uh, but make sure you do us a favor. Uh, follow Mo on X, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. You can get his latest work there, as well as from this, the, the show handle, SNB Today. And then I am at LV Gully. Uh, and if you're watching, make sure you subscribe wherever you're watching. Also, uh, follow us wherever you are in social media. You can find our handle there too, as we are active as well. My friend, I will see you on Thursday. Talk to you soon. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie from Omoton, I am Scott Branson. This has been Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. We will see everybody on Thursday. Until then, take care, everyone. All right.